Take a look at Apple while we're at it. I think they're getting close to $300 a share, $298.11 as we speak. I'm going to bring in our guest who follows Apple, and our guest says... Apple's going to reach a valuation of $2 trillion. It's now at $1.3 trillion. Gene Munster is the man who's saying this. Welcome back to the show, Gene. Uh, if, it, if it's valued at $2 trillion, doesn't that mean that the stock goes to $400 a share? Make your case. It's so actually be a little bit more than that. It's uh, essentially uh, would be about 440 to 450. Uh, there's some shares that get moved around with their buyback, but kind of in that range. It would be above $400. It's currently about just over a $1.3 trillion market cap. The case is pretty straightforward. Is if you think about the future of tech, is that uh, their business around wearables and services in combination with what's going to happen with 5G should yield 10% earnings growth for the next few years. And the reason why I emphasize the three year is that a typical long only investor, professional investor, typically thinks about buying a stock for three years. So the case is that if you put 10% growth on the current year, extrapolate that to three years, we're just under $19 a share in hard gap earnings. Uh, separately, if you apply a 25 multiple on that earnings, that $18 or $19 earnings, that gets you to the $2 trillion. Psychologically, that's a big step for investors. But I think that the fundamentals about what Apple's doing around wearable services and software in combination with 5G and its gap earnings power, I think uh, justifies this. And just to be really clear about the roadmap, how we get there, Stuart, is we think that the stock should be valued at some point this year at $350. We think 400 is a very achievable number for uh, next year. That $2 trillion mark is probably two-plus years away. but definitely in, uh, in the realm of uh, what, where this stock should go. That's quite a roadmap you got there, Gene, but we'll take it. All right, Gene Monster, thanks a lot. But listen to this. I know you followed te uh, Tesla. The tax credit which you used to get for buying a Tesla in America, it's gone. Uh, it no longer exists. But you don't think that matters to the stock, do you? And by the way, the stock is up eight bucks as we speak. I think what uh, ultimately matters is what the demand is. And if you think about that $1,800 uh, savings, we've seen that decline. It used to be $5,000 a few years ago. A year ago, that was $3,700. So uh, when the price, when that, uh, uh, that subsidy, essentially, the government subsidy uh, declined in the past year, there was a lot of concern from investors that the demand for Model 3, demand for Tesla would decline. What we saw is uh, the opposite happened, is that in the March quarter, they sold, uh, delivered uh, 51,000 vehicles. And then in June, that stepped up to 92,000 and then 97,000 in the September quarter. So what we're seeing is, I think, uh, buyers are thinking about this more holistically. Obviously, the, the, the tax savings, the tax credit is welcome, but we've done a lot of work around the total cost of ownership. When you factor in uh, fuel savings along with uh, less maintenance, uh, less insurance around these, uh, what we have found over a five-year period, a Toyota Camry is actually 5% more than a, a Model 3. And so uh, the simple takeaway is that I think that the, the, the tidal wave around electrification outweighs the, the headwind related to the loss of the tax credit. It's just fascinating. And you've been right so far on both Apple and te under Tesla. Gene, thanks for joining us. Happy New Year to you, lad. Thank you. Sure thing. Happy New Year. All right.